What's up, guys? Welcome to the podcast. Today we have another podcast episode with Anhancha. If I'm, I completely said your name wrong, I'm sorry. We, when I finish the, you can tell me like how you to pronounce your name. Thank you for coming on, and let's get through this. First of all, tell us how we pronounce your name, and second of all, give us like a true introduction of yourself, who you are, and stuff. <laughs> Uh, hi, Carrie. Thank you so much for having me here. My name is Anangsha, Anangsha Alamyan, and I am a writer. I was educated as a civil engineer. I have a master's degree in civil engineering, but currently I'm working as a full-time writer. I also uh, am planning, I have published three books, and I'm planning on publishing the next book in 2022. So yeah, that's pretty much about me. That's nice. How did you get started with all of this um How did you actually begin to start writing? Or were you, what, did you always write when you were small? I actually have, uh, I, don't have re- I don't really have memories of those times, but I have newspaper clippings of my poems that I wrote when I was four or five years old and my parents had sent to newspapers to get published. So apparently I always used to be a writer, but I never did it on a regular basis because school and college took up a lot of time. Uh, only in 2014, I started writing more regularly and I started putting my work online. Uh, but you can say that the real turning point came back in 2020 during the pandemic when everyone had a little bit more time on their hands because of the whole work from home situation. So at that time, I explored more and I discovered more avenues. And that's when I started on this journey of, you know, realizing my dream of becoming a full time writer someday. Mm-hmm. And so you basically started in the beginning of pandemic to become a content writer, to become a writer, yes. correct? How, yes. how has that, that journey just been? A hobby. Uh, sorry? How was that journey? Well, the journey was incredible. I learned so many new things. I learned about so many different platforms that you can use to build your resume, build your personal brand. I learned so much about how to pitch clients and pitch sponsors. It has been an incredible journey so far. Mm-hmm. So right now with your, um, with your let's call it um, business, because you write and make money, so it's a business. What yeah. are some obstacles that you have faced, that you have learned? So what would be some message that you would give yourself when you started? So if you could go back in time and you have all the information, what would you tell yourself? Uh, you know, if I could go back and talk to my younger self, I would definitely tell her this one thing that... Uh, No matter what you are doing, uh, be it writing or be the business or whatever, it takes some time to gain some traction and see real results. So if you quit before you even like start seeing results, then it's not like you're never going to reach the top. So back in 2011, 2012, I started a lot of projects. Like I started writing on Quora, I started different projects, but I just gave up after a few months. But the real results come when you stick to doing something you love for at least one year, which I didn't do it back then. So this is something I would say, like, you know, if you are doing something, commit yourself to it and keep doing it at least for a year before you complain about not seeing results. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what was was some breakthrough points that changed the whole, the your whole career like what was something that maybe it was a mindset shift or it was a switch in like your writing or it was a shift between your uh your content marketing strategy so what was that what was some things that changed your whole career in this industry uh i think the shift would be discovering this platform called medium medium medium.com where i learned that i could actually get paid if i wrote well So this was the first time in my life where I could see like the potential of how much money was there in the writing business. Before that, I didn't know much. I just knew I loved writing and I thought the only way to become rich as a writer is to publish a book that becomes a bestseller. So this was the first time I learned about online writing and I learned about freelance writing. So it gave me the options that I didn't know that were there in my life before. So I would say that it was a little bit more exploring, of course, like I read a lot on Medium, I talked to other people who were in this business, and I came to know about the opportunities. But that turning point definitely came when I found uh, writing on Medium. Mm -hmm. Okay, so were were you always engaging from the beginning with the audience, or you started engaging after some while after 
something changed your mind and you started engaging with people? Uh, engaging with people as I always used to reply to comments that I got on my writing because to me it was like someone spent five minutes of their life writing a comment the least I can do is write a reply that's something I was doing since earlier on but I started actively networking with other people and other writers that happened in 2020 because I realized that when you talk with more people you get to know of more opportunities and you can mutually help each other grow together the power of a community right so that is something I discovered uh, in 2020. Mm -hmm. So how do you cooperate with other writers uh maybe we think of some fun collaborations like a collab like a collaborative project that people can work on together uh, or we can you know give each other a shout out so that i do sometimes with other writers like you know i share someone's newsletter and they share mine in return so we get exposed to different audiences sometimes it's just like you know hey come to my uh and let me do one interview of you and I'll do, you do something of me. So, you know, it's just like exchanging your audience, exchanging your knowledge and sharing about the opportunities that could be there in your field. Do you think this is an, uh, this, is a, this was and still is since you still do it, an effective way to gain new audience or you haven't found any success yet in this cooperation, let's call it? No, oh, definitely. Like collaborations with other writers can definitely help you become more successful. Otherwise, there's always that feeling of envy that creeps in, right? That this person is achieving so much more. I am not doing anything myself. But when you talk to people, you realize that they are also facing the same struggles that you are. And maybe you know something that can actually help them and they know something that can help you. And I would say that it is a great way of not only growing your audience, but also feeling that you are not alone even though it might seem like you're not alone in this journey, there are other people who overcome the same struggles every day. And it gives you the courage to do so yourself. So you're trying to say that communicating with people, maybe with other writers or communicating with your audience has dramatically changed your career in writing? Definitely, yeah, it has, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you would start right now with nothing, no no audience but you have the skills and the mindset that you have right now what would you do because there are a lot of people that maybe they have been practicing practicing for so long they have the skills they have been learning all this stuff through books and courses but they don't know where to start right now i would pick a platform that has great traction uh, it would either be linkedin or twitter but i'm more inclined towards linkedin because we can write longer posts there on linkedin and there are so many people who use LinkedIn, but don't post anything. Like I read the stat somewhere uh, that there are 740 million users of LinkedIn, active users, but less than 1% of them write a post, one post in every day. So, you know, if you are publishing something, it automatically puts you ahead of 99% people. That is what I would do. I would just start on LinkedIn and I would keep writing the posts and I would be super patient with myself to not expect any magic, at least in the first one year. So in, in the first one year, I would write without any expectations. My only goal would be to build a personal brand, to build credibility, to gain some followers. And once I have that credibility, once I have a follower base, once I have proof that I can succeed on a platform like LinkedIn, maybe then I'll start pitching to freelance clients that, you know, hey, I have achieved this success on my own. Would you like me uh, to replicate this for your brand or for your company? And then I can pitch to clients to get some freelance gigs. That is what I would do if I had to start right now. Mm -hmm. Do you have any success with Twitter? Uh, I have made some sales on Twitter, but I don't use Twitter as a personal branding platform. Twitter is more like an online journal. You know, I just write whatever I feel like doing it. It's not very, I'm very honest on Twitter. It's not, I don't do any conscious branding there. Yes. What do you think is, um, is the point for you for quantity and quality? Like how much should you post and what should be the quality of your content before you put it out? The definitions uh, for this are very vague. So I would like to yeah. see how you define quality and how you define quantity, because a lot of people say quantity is like once a week or like once per day and quality is like having good video, good audio, but for every person it's different. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Right. 
so initially when i'm starting i would when anyone is starting i would suggest the ideal quantity would be once per day five days a week because when you are starting out you're on an algorithm where there are so many like even if one one percent of people are posting that's still seven million people posting every day right so you are competing against seven million people so you have to uh, put yourself out there and be so consistent that the algorithm is forced to favor you so in the beginning i wouldn't worry about quality much my only goal would be to write as much as possible so i can be visible and my work can be favored by the algorithm but you will see though no, it doesn't it's not only true for writing it's true for every field that quantity leads to quality when you keep writing so much and when you you'll obviously get feedback comments from people and you incorporate that to make your writing even better so your quality will improve the, the kind of content you write will change and you will learn so much along your journey that automatically the topic of the post will also change so in the first uh, three or four months the priority my priority would be to write as much as possible and later on when i have sort of you know got a stable uh, stats or some follower count i have something that i can you know fall back upon then i would maybe cut back maybe write three or four times a week and then focus on only providing as much value as i can mm -hmm. to my okay. audience great response okay so the 11 minutes is up but if you have time for one more question i would love to go for one more question yeah, definitely okay so what what do you think is something that you do that a lot of people in your niche don't do of course this is putting you on the spot and is giving away your secrets but of course, like we want to provide the, the most value to our audience. So sometimes he's asking our guests uh, very sometimes in intimating questions because they may want, don't want to give out their secret. Uh, no worries. I can just give you a very generalized answer off the top of my head. Uh, people in my niche, as in people, other writers. So one thing that I do, which most writers don't do, is that I treat my writing like a business. Many people are of the opinion, many writers I know are of the opinion that uh, if they think they are good at something, they will only do that and not do any other thing. But when you are doing a business, you don't just work on assumptions, right? You do market survey, you do some research, and then you tweak your product according to what the market needs. So that is what I do. Like I, I don't wait for the perfect article or the perfect uh, post to publish. I keep publishing as and when I can, whatever comes to mind. And then when I get feedback, I, I try to see what my audience wants from me. And I try to give exactly that. Occasionally, I also do polls. I ask my followers to fill out Google Forms that will help me understand uh, how I can help them better, how I can serve them better, and how I can give them what they want. So my writing is never focused on me or focused on what I want. My writing is always focused on the reader of what challenges they might be facing and how I can help them. So that is something which I don't do. And I think many people in the writing community don't do. And I think it has helped me a lot in my journey so far. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I, I, we don't have any more time to ask you questions. Anyway, guys, thank you for coming on. See you in the next one.